I'm assuming you're here because you have a tooth problem. Did I get that correct? <laughs> All right, good. So we'll talk about tooth problems, but I want to talk about something else first. Because, uh, by the way, let me introduce you to my son, Dr. Matt Sheldon, my associate, board certified periodontist who does all the work here. He just makes me the star. And that's Dr. Michelle Furtado. And then you'll meet my staff members. That is Joy, and that's Jennifer, that's Hannah over there. And there's Tasha over there. So we've got a whole group of people, all of whom have lots of experience in dentistry and lots of experience here. So I know sometimes you don't want to ask me the questions because I'm the doctor, it's okay. But you know, they can ask them and uh, they probably know more than I do anyway. So please take advantage of this time. You're all here for a particular reason. Um, and I don't know what that reason is and I don't expect you to share that with us in public. But I'm gonna tell you some things. I'm gonna tell you some things that I discovered because we started doing, I did my first dental implant on May 16th, 1986. Wow. Yes. And by the way, it was not my last implant. So we've been doing hundreds of implants um, every single year, um, which is fine. So let me tell you about the first implant. Do you want to hear about the first implant? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the first implant. I take the instruction. I study the books. I look at the x-rays. I fall asleep that night thinking nothing about, thinking about nothing but that surgery. I'm going to do something into somebody's jawbone. I'm going to screw a screw in. I didn't sleep very well that night. And then I did the procedure. And the patient did fine. And I did fine. And everything, everything came out OK. That first dental implant procedure took me about two hours to do. See, at that time, all the implants were of the same length. But people's jaws aren't of the same length. And so I had to measure on the x-ray, and I had to measure in the patient's mouth, and I had to cut the implant to the right, uh, to the right length, and then I had to re-sterilize the implant, and then finally did the preparation, and finally put the implant in. Now it takes us about 15 minutes to do that same thing. A lot has changed. And a lot has changed for the better. And by the way, a lot has changed for the worse. And I don't mean to get too serious, because I'm not a serious kind of guy, but there's a concern out there. Because if you take a look and you see my advertising and you see everybody else's advertising, you say, you see, they do dental implants. And the concern is this. When you graduate from dental school, you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> There's no requirement. There's no specialty requirement to do dental implants. So I can take a three-day course, and I can advertise to do dental implants. Or I can do what Dr. Furtado has done and took a three-year periodontal residency in which he did implant training and surgical training for three years, and he can do dental implants. How do you differentiate between the two? Well, one is that I've told you that. But just think, I, 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 I see this. I see this all the time. Um, and I encounter this with, with, with the periodontists that I teach. And how do you differentiate how, who you're going to see? Imagine going to see a cardiothoracic surgeon. You know, you need a quadruple bypass. And see the cardiothoracic surgeon and cardiothoracic surgeon says, you need this, and we'll get it all set up, set up with all of the equipment and, 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 and all of the diagnostic equipment to, to make that work well. And then you say to the cardiothoracic surgeon, or maybe his secretary, well, I'm going to go to my general physician for a second opinion and see if he can do it cheaper. Because that's exactly what's going on in dentistry now. I, it's exactly what's going on in dentistry. And it concerns us because... Dental implants are pretty much the same. They're all pretty good. They are. And so if we're going and buying a commodity called the dental implant, you're going to get the same thing. But who is doing the dental implant? What kind of equipment is there? Are they 
preserving all of the bone possible? Are making, they making sure the bone is not heated up so the implant succeeds? Are they taking blood out of your arm and, and spinning down the blood in the centrifuge and, and recovering the platelets which have growth factors and coating the implant with those growth factors so that it heals up more predictably and faster? And do they have the training to do it, do it correctly? We're gonna see a lot of things tonight that will show you what a correctly done dental implant, and more importantly, a correctly done dental restoration is. Okay, so that's the serious part. Here's the neat part. Remember I talked to you, you drill a hole. You drill a hole and you put the implant in, and it sounds horrible when I say drill a hole. And I was so nervous and on May 16th, 1986. Fast forward to today, and patients who come to see us are patients who essentially have changed their lifestyle as a result of their teeth. They're not doing things. They're not chewing. You're going to see some of those patients today. In fact, you saw one of those patients in the newspaper ad. How many people came here as a result of the newspaper ad, by the way? Okay. Anybody go, come here as a result of the online digital ad? Okay, so it was all paper, newspaper, or the sign? Or you know somebody? Okay, good. Good. And you heard me on the radio, good. Um, <clears throat> patients and people, not patients, adopt a lifestyle based on their teeth. They go to a restaurant and they go down the menu to see what they can chew. Sometimes they have to excuse themselves and go to the bathroom in order to be able to clean up because of what gets caught underneath whatever teeth they have. They change where they go. They change who they date. I, I can't tell you how many people have changed their life in some way, whether it's a better job or whether it's a relationship as a result of putting in teeth. I didn't expect that when I graduated from dental school. I said, all right, you know, you do what we do in order to be able to help people save their teeth. But that's what occurs with, uh, with dental implant therapy or dental rehabilitation. So I'll we'll show you some of, some of that tonight. Final thing is this. There are lots of things and lots of alternatives that people have in terms of how they're going to spend their life and how they're going to spend their money. One key element of what we do is not dental implants. It's the diagnosis and treatment planning that leads up to dental implants. We want to make sure that when we're looking at you, we're looking at you from every perspective. Not necessarily assuming the teeth are going to come out and dental implants go in, which is what you see advertised, and which is what we do. But also, is there a better possibility of saving your teeth, and can your teeth be saved more predictably and perhaps less expensively than if we did dental implants? So when a person comes in here, it's not for a 10-minute visit. It's for a two-hour visit so that we go over the variables and the different choices that you have so you can make the best choice for yourself. Not unusual for a patient to spend one two-hour session and then come back again to discuss the different options. We want to make sure you have the different options available to you and you have a good idea as to what you can do, what the predictability of it is going to be, how much it's going to cost, um, all of those types of things. So that we're going to be, we're obviously going to encourage you to make that dental visit with us and the special offer that we have is donate $50 to one of the eight charities in our charitable giving campaign. And you'll have the examination and you'll have the um, CT scan, the x-rays, everything you need. And then you're in a better position uh, to make the decision for yourself. And we're real pr proud of that. That charitable giving campaign has now collected over $160,000 for local charities. So uh, a little tear in my eye when that, when that occurs. And right now, actually, all of our examinations, whether somebody comes in online or whether they give to our charitable giving campaign, in some way, every examination fee is going to charity because there's lots of hurricane damage out there and we want to make sure that we, we do our part. So with that, um, let me show you something. What do you want me to do? Okay. So when she came in, she looked like that. 
and she wasn't sure what she wanted to do, but she'd seen a commercial or got in the magazine or whatever it is, however you got here. And she said, I want to explore the options. She has a story, and I don't really want to share the story, but it was a story about the relationship that she had, and, 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 and so and, and things weren't going as well as they could, and she was now at a point where she could change her life, and she tried to confront that decision. It was difficult for her to confront that decision because she only looked that way, and that's the way she's always looked, and she knows she wanted to look better, and somebody told her, no, I can't. I, I don't want you to spend spend that. I don't want you to do that. And so we decided to show her what she could look like. And so with a simulating software, it's fairly easy. We can just trace her existing smile. And as we trace her existing smile, we're then creating a space within which we can insert a new smile. And we can insert that smile, and you can see on the right side, there's a selection of teeth that we can choose from. We can change the color, we can change the curvature, we can change the brightness, we can change a lot of things in order to be able to simulate what, in fact, she could have. And so, in this is obviously speeded up a little bit, but within a three month, th about a three minute period of time, we can kind of give her some options, or at least show her an option, so that she can see that. And now, all of a sudden, when she saw that, that was a tur the, the turning point for her. And she said, all right, now that I can see what I can have, I need to do that. I want to do that. And she did. We love to take these pictures. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's what we do. And to be able to get that kind of a result routinely is what we spend so much time training to do and so much time with our patients or even away from our patients, because a lot of the planning we do is away from our patients. Planning on the computer, planning using photographs, planning using models in order to be able to create a result like that. So with that, I want to introduce to you, who speaks first? Michelle, okay. So I want to introduce you Dr. Michelle Furtado. Uh, Dr. Furtado is, is board certified periodontist. He trained the same place that I did, University of Connecticut. And by the way, my son, Dr. Matt Sheldon, trained the same place I did, Tufts University. Yeah, I kept on going to college until I got it right. So um, Michelle has really um, created new paradigms for this practice because he's been able to take some of the technology that he um, has learned and has developed new te technology right here, technology that you don't ordinarily see. He's going to show you that. Michelle trained in Brazil as a, as a general dentist. Then he came here, actually he came to, went to Canada, and he was at the University of Toronto for five years um, doing research in dental materials, particularly dental implant materials, bone grafting materials and dental implants. Uh, then he went to Texas for a while, decided maybe Florida would be the place to come, and we're so thrilled to have him. So, Dr. Michelle Furtado. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for coming, that's great. That's very kind of you, Dr. Sheldon. Um, so before I start, I just want, by a show of hands, um, I wanna know who knows what an implant is. You have one, great, good. So, if you don't know, we have a picture here. So, this is the tooth, this is the implant, basically, the implant itself is the component that mimics the root of the tooth. It's not actually the whole piece. This is um, um, the implant with a fastening device called the abutment and the crown that goes on top of it. So when I say implant, I'm only referring to the root part. And when Dr. Sheldon and Dr. Matt Sheldon say an implant, you're only referring to this part but it's actually a three-part system where we give you the substitute for the root and then we give you a second component that attaches to the, to the implant itself and a third component, which, which is the crown, okay? So I'm, I'm, I know um, Dr. Sheldon emphasized the idea that the main thing in, in every dental treatment is diagnosis and, and the tools that we have to diagnose properly 
so that we can treat you properly. Um, but I'm going to focus most of my part on, on the planning for an implant. Okay? So basically what you see here is what we call the panoramic x-ray. So you go and take that x-ray that goes around your, your face and you have a flat representation of your face. So this is the right side, that's the left side. Um, and here in this case, um, we're planning an implant in this area where you have the blue dotted lines there and in this area here, okay? The issue with this is that we don't have a 3D representation of your jaw. This is a flat, it's like a picture. So I don't know the, the depth or the width of, of your jaw just looking at that. But th what the CAT scan does is that it allows us to play with this image and see in everything in all angles. And I can um, reproduce your jaw perfectly in using, the, in using the CAT scan. So what this here is, is that middle dotted line there. This is the, the side of the lip. This is the side of the tongue. And now I'm measuring how thick the bone is and how deep I can go with the implant. And this is that dotted line there, and I'm doing the same thing. So basically I'm deciding if you're a good candidate for an implant. And what I look here is, okay, you have good width, you have good length, and I'm away for any vital structures. There's, your mouth is and your, your head and your, your, and your neck are full of vessels and nerves, and we want to be away from those when we're doing surgery. So that's the first step. That's the first piece of technology that helps us a lot in terms of diagnostics. And when you come for your first exam, for all patients and new patient exams, we take a CT scan. Okay? The other thing that we do is we take an impression. And, and the impression that you probably used to is the one that we use that goopy material that we put in your mouth and that sets in your mouth and you kind of try to take it out. Well, this here is a digital impression. And Dr. Matt's gonna go over that a little bit. Uh, but we're basically taking a picture of your mouth or taking a video of your mouth. And that creates a file in the computer that becomes this. This is exactly the copy of that patient's mouth. So we're not doing any goopy impression, no messy impressions anymore. This is all digital. And here, what you see with that red tooth and that white tooth, it's not fashion. It is, it is actually the software. I'm designing a tooth that's going to go there and a tooth that's going to go here before I think about an implant. Because the ultimate goal is I want to give you teeth that you can chew with, that look good, that you can chew with. So I start here. I start with the end result in mind. I, per, I place the perfect teeth in that uh, copy of your mouth, and I make sure it is in proper position aligned with the other ones. And based on that, that's where I'm going to place my implant. So the next step is, this is a CT scan. So you see the whole, the whole skull, the skeleton there. And this is the digital impression. I want to make sure that I'm placing the implants in the proper position for both type of, types of, of tools for the digital impression and the CT scan. So what I do is I merge them together. I make sure that they are all aligned. And then I place the implants all in the software. I haven't seen you yet. I haven't touched you yet. I usually tell my patients, I've done the surgery. Everything is done. I just need you now. Because <laughs> everything is done here before. Because I want to make sure that everything is perfect. So that's the planning on that flat panoramic view based on where the teeth are going to be. This, is, this here is the representation of the nerve that, that runs on, inside your, your jaw. And you see, I, I want to be away from that. Okay. So here we have where the implant is going to come out on the crowns that Dr. Matt's going to place. So I want to make it easier for him. I want to make his job um, easier. And the question now is, yeah, that's, that's nice. I've, we took all the image from you, transferred it to the computer. How, how am I going to transfer that plan back to your mouth? Because everything is done in the computer. How do I make sure that this is precise? This is accurate. Well, 
The answer is a surgical guide. So the software allows us to create a guide that only lets me place the implant on those two holes there. So there's no guessing. I've done that on the computer. I've duplicated that. I did a, a surgical guide that only allows me to place the implants where I planned. And then the next step is how do I create that guide? Well, you're familiar with, with uh, printers, right? We can print everything on a paper right now. You write something, print on the printer. Well, we have a 3D printer in the office. So I transfer that file to a 3D printer, and here you can see four guides being printed, and I use those on the surgery. I sterilize those on the day of the surgery. That fits onto the, to the, to your teeth. You have the holes there, the, the position of the, of the implants exactly like, like I planned, and then I can only place the implants in that position, those, in those places. So what was this in the beginning, that was the planning, becomes this in reality. So a lot, like Dr. Sheldon said, a lot has changed since when he started. He, had to, he used trace paper mm -hmm. to put on top of a panoramic view like that. He would trace the nerve. He would measure the distance here, and there's some magnification from that X-ray to reality. He had to account for that, and he had to cut the implant accordingly. So no, I mean, no surprise that he was nervous the day before. We're still nervous today, but we have much more, you know, many more tools and diagnostic aids that will help us to make this more straightforward. So the next step is a talented dentist, cosmetic dentist, to put the teeth on top of the implants. And that's Dr. Matt Sheldon's job. And he is what he's going to show you some of, the, some of his beauty work. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So I want to start off with some small cases, single implants, a couple multiple implants, and just show what we can do. And maybe this is going to be um, one of your scenarios, and we'll go all the way till a full mouth of dental implants. Um, so I always like to start this uh, start by showing this photo. This patient has a real big cavity, huge hole in the mouth. Saturday night special. Their tooth is in pain. It's throbbing. They need that tooth out. Um, so what can we do? We're gonna get that tooth out, and we're gonna place an implant in that exact same site um, where that root is. So we're gonna uh, place it right in there. And like Dr. Furtado said, goopy impressions. Not fun, not fun for the patient, not fun for the dentist, especially after you had a big breakfast or something like that. No thanks. So digital is, um, is the way of the future, and it's, it's now. So instead of the goopy stuff, um, it's pretty cool where I'm looking at a computer, I have this wand that has a camera on it, and I'm physically just taking pictures around the mouth um, to prepare for uh, the implant surgery and for uh, the crown on top of that at the end. So that's what that looks like. It's a nice, nice computer, and uh, um, there's my lovely assistant helping me out for demonstration purposes. And then we get the digital representation, a physical model of the digital representation. So the lab prints this out for us. This is what a tooth preparation looks like. This is what, if you have a regular crown in your mouth, um, the dentist has to cut the tooth down in 360 degrees. So that's what step two is, the fastener that Dr. Furtado was talking about that goes onto the implant. And then there's a bird's eye view of what the crown looks like uh, looking down at the patient. Uh, actually, up at, the, yeah, up at the patient. So there's another view, side shot of the crown on the model. And there's the implant that Dr. Furtado placed with a fastener on top, and then the end result is hard to tell which one the false tooth is, but here's the implant crown right there. So that's, um, you know, that's our single tooth dentistry. That's implant dentistry for, uh, for a, a one missing tooth. What do we do for multiple teeth? Patient came in like this. Uh, I believe he was around 80 years old. Um, and wasn't happy with the space, and his previous dentist gave him the option to fill the space with this. He's, he's 80 years old. He wants to chew. He doesn't want to worry about you know, the calculus. I'm sorry if you already had dinner. The calculus on this, he wanted something fixed in his mouth that he didn't have to walk around uh, cleaning a partial denture. So there's the implants in, two implants for three teeth. 
Here they are there in x-ray form. This is the fastener. This is step two, which is made of a ceramic, a zirconia material. And then here's three teeth that are fixed in his mouth. He doesn't have to worry about taking partials out, partial dentures out ever again. So that was cool. He's thrilled with the result. He, he wanted to get out of that partial bad. So he's uh, happy as can be. So there we are before and after. All right. Who's, who's brave? Who wants to guess which one the implant is? Left there? Really, really good guess. That's what I would have said too. It was that one. She's probably going to come back and see us and get that taken care of with a new veneer or something like that. But that's a, that's a veneer, a, a, a porcelain facing. Uh, but she came in with a broken tooth at the gum line and needed dental implant therapy there. So here's the broken tooth. There's a root canal already done, so she's not in any pain, but the tooth just you know, broke off right at the gum line. Dental implant placed in perfect position. Thank you, Dr. Furtado, for that. That's nice of you. The fastener on top and the crown that gets uh, cemented on top of there. So we go from that to that. So that's, that's our, that's our run-of-the-mill stuff, single to multiple tooth implant dentistry. Um, and then we'll start talking about what we can do for full, um, full arch replacing of teeth. And Dr. Lee Sheldon, you are back on. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's my boy. <laughs> So Matthew uh, trained at uh, Tufts, and then he did his advanced education in general dentistry at Baylor College in Dallas. So and then he came, and he joined me. We have some Texas pants here, some Dallas pants. Good, good. So let's take a look at some things. So um, remember at the beginning, I talked about experience. I'm going to show you experience. You'll see teeth, but, I, but we'll talk about experience. So Eddie goes from that position to that position. Now notice Eddie is straining to smile. Because Eddie's been trying to hide this for so many years. And so we say, smile, Eddie. And finally, he smiles. And that's what he has. But it isn't a natural smile. There he is. Now he's comfortable. And now he has his teeth. So that's the experience we want. And frankly, that's what we want a patient to say. Not that I have a hard to go. I'd rather they talk about their experiences. But what the heck? He says something nice about me. <laughs> Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit of the story because he doesn't mind my telling you the story. John is a security guard. Um, and John is not a security guard during the day. He's a security guard at night. And the reason he's a security guard at night, you can see. So we asked John to smile. And here's the experience. He hadn't done that in a long time. You can see why. Now, John's story is even more interesting, if you call this interesting, because John spent most of his time at home, wouldn't go out very much. Essentially, remember I talked about the fact that your life changes and can change as a result of your teeth. And that's what happened with John. Even when John got his teeth, he still didn't know what to do with them. Notice. He didn't know what to do with them. But now he does, because he has that kind of an opportunity. People say you've got to be rich to have dental implants. And the answer is no, you don't. You decide how you're going to spend your money. And John's a security guard. And he decided what he needed to do in order to be able to get to the stage. And John. We need to do what we need to do in order to be able to provide you with the quality and predictability that needs to go there. And so our purpose was to show you some of the planning steps so you can see that there is a difference, that there are steps you need to take in order to be able to create a predictable result. That's what John's got, and that's what every one of our patients gets because we have warranties on everything that we do. If you want to know what the rest of the t-shirt says, it says, if you show me your implants, I'll show you mine, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> now this is Steve. Steve also doesn't mind my telling you 
his story. Because Steve walked in and he said, I hear you do dental implants, Doc. Take out all my teeth and put in dental implants and give me one of those smiles. And I looked in his mouth and I said, Steve, you don't need to have your teeth taken out. Your teeth are just fine. You may not have all of them, but the teeth that are there are just, smi are just fine. And we can create that. And we did. Mustache is gone, and you see the quote. Did not have one dental implant done. This is all fixed bridge work. These are teeth that are fastened to the teeth rather than be fastened to implants. Works just as well. Costs a lot less. He's happy. Peggy's uh, interesting because Peggy is a nurse. And Peggy came to us because of this. And she'd been to other people also because of this. And so I looked at her and you start to do the planning. Now, you can look at a few things here and you'll see some things. Number one, she's smiling for us, which is good. And she smiles, she's a nurse. She, she, she needs to make her patients comfortable. She was concerned about this, as you would be. She was concerned about the prominence. And so when you're looking from a planning standpoint, you're not just looking at taking out teeth and putting implants in. You're, talking, you're looking at what do we need to do to make the entire frame of the smile look good? How do we make the gums look good? Because the gums around the teeth are just as important as the teeth themselves. How do we recreate the ridge or the, the area underneath the upper lip in order to be able to create a smile that'll work well? And so that's what we did. So when then a patient goes from that position to another position and you see the changes that occur, then there's a lot more confidence. And we, we just, I just heard a story. I didn't even realize the story. Remember the first patient that we saw and one of my staff members kind of told me the story. Remember the first one where we did the little tracing around and we, we substituted the smile? She met, what was it, her high school sweetheart? And now they've hooked up again. You know, she, she had lost her husband, and now they've hooked up again. And what did she say, Tasha? Uh, she actually said that he made the comment, your Here. smile... Here, get in my microphone. Your smile is as beautiful as it ever was. He right. has no idea that yeah. she had it done. <laughs> Isn't that a thrill? That's great, yeah. Now, this is the one you saw in the newspaper. It was small, but you know, you saw you saw the before and after. Um, now you see it close up. I don't know if you like it better or worse, but you get the idea. I could move everyone. Anyone here could have extracted all of her teeth. Could have. And so we took out her teeth and we went from this to that. Now what's interesting is you can do that in one day. You do it in temporary fashion. You know, you've seen the TV commercials. Oh, I'll get you, you know, take out the teeth, put the implants in, you get the teeth in, in the same day. You've seen all the TV commercials. We, we know about those. What they don't tell you is those are temporary teeth. That we have to, I was, I was one of the first ones to do it with permanent teeth and notice we're not doing it that way anymore. I was the first one in Central Florida in 2005 to do that. Uh, we don't do that anymore. Why? Because when we extract the teeth, the gum tissue needs to shrink. And the gum tissue needs to reach its final position before we make the permanent teeth. If we make permanent teeth on the day that we do the implants, then the gums will shrink, and now you'll have a space between where the implants are and where the teeth are. And you'll say, how come food gets caught in that space? Or how come air goes through, through that space when it smiles? So we put in temporary teeth. So on the day of treatment, we have the anesthesiologist here, take out the teeth, put the implants in, and make put in temporary teeth. They look pretty good. They look pretty good. Uh, then we wait for the gums to heal, which usually takes about uh, four months or so. And then we start to make new impressions with the gum tissue the way it is. And that's when we do the real artistic work, the beautiful work where we're doing try-ins and we're modifying the smile and we're modifying the shape of the teeth, the size of the teeth, um, uh, the color of the teeth as we need to in order to be able to create the smile that we want. So that's when Matthew does the fancy stuff during, during that period of time. 
But still, you can imagine, even with temporary teeth, so these are, these are the permanent teeth, even with temporary teeth, what a difference that can make to a person all on that first day. So you come in the morning, and by the time you leave, you have teeth in place. Teeth, they're solidly in place. Or we call it solid bite. So I hope we've given you enough of an overview without taking too much of your time. Our purpose tonight is to allow you to see what can be done. We hope you'll make an appointment with us so that we can look at you individually. And you know, if people want to ask me questions here sometimes, what about my particular situation? And the answer is, I can't tell about your particular situation until I see you, until we evaluate, and we take the CT scan and we evaluate the different possibilities. So if there are general questions that, that pertain to what we talked about tonight, Please ask them. Are there any questions you have? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you do the complete operation from start to finish at your facility here? Yes, we do. Yeah, so the question is, do we do everything here? Yes, by having surgeons, anesthesiologists, that's a medical anesthesiologist, and restorative dentist all in one place. We have both specialists and general dentists, specialists and restorative dentists all in one place. It's kind of unique in this area. And, and lab technicians. And we have laboratory technicians right here. Yes. He occupies that space over there. <laughs> so, so, what are the questions you have? Yes, Do you offer Tammy. a financial um, payment plan system, or is it all up front? Or? There are payment plan systems, and uh, we have Joy here, Jennifer here, Tasha's here, um, all of whom can tell you about that, so that we can you can get uh, an an idea as to. Is how that works. But yes, there are payment plans in order to be able to make it easy or easier, I guess, to allow you to have the dentistry that you need. <coughs> what else? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, have you ever had a How long will it take to say that you did all your teeth at once? Well, are you talking about if we were to take out the teeth and put implants in? Is that what you're talking about? How long would that procedure take? Yes. Okay. Um, usually the surgical procedure itself takes about two hours. And then putting the teeth in, the temporary teeth, takes another two hours. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then you have it done right then. That's right. That, on that day, assuming that you need the implants and you need the, and of course that's, that's part of it, then all of that is done in that one day, and then you have your temporary teeth in place, Then, and you'll see us for post-operative visits, but then we'll wait the, the about four months for the gums to heal before we make the, the permanent teeth for you. Well, the best thing to do is make an appointment and get you evaluated. Right? You took the words right out of my mouth, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What else, there any, any other questions? Please, it's fine. Good. Well, again, I appreciate your being here. If we're talking about, Jennifer, maybe you can help me with money. How, yes. What kind of money are we talking about? Um, it depends on what you do need done. Yeah. A uh, single implant um, with all three components, we're running into $5,000. Um, if you need to have everything replaced, the beauty of it is you do not have to have an individual implant in place of every single tooth to replace it. These amazing guys have figured out a way to screw it on five or six implants. By the technology, they're able to place it all in there, make sure it holds everything together without all the implants. We were looking probably at a 25, 22 to 25,000, depending on the complexity of your case, per arch. So depending on your size one, a lot of patients do their upper denture, or their lower denture. Their upper denture fits well, or they just want a new upper denture, but their lower one just rocks all over the place. A lot of them come back saying, I wish I'd done the whole thing. So <laughs> you have it both ways. That's where the financial companies come into play. And they so offer. you're talking about $5,000 teeth? If you have individual teeth that need to be replaced. But I can tell you this from firsthand experience, $5,000 tooth is nothing. You start getting into good ones. Bridge fails 10, 15 years down the road, you're doing it again, it's a lot more expensive than one implant. You took out eight of my teeth out at once, so I know. <laughs> yeah. Good. What else? Does someone have uh, had dentures? Yeah. Does that eliminate an opportunity to have implants delivered? 
No, it doesn't. Uh, the, the, the concern only is the amount of bone support that you have. And we can evaluate that very easily with a CT scan, determine the bone, bone availability that you have. If you have sufficient bone, then we can do everything we talked about. If you, have, if you don't have enough bone, and that happens, but it happens rarely, Dan, then we sometimes do bone grafts first in order to be able to form that bone, and then once the bone is formed, then we can go ahead with the procedure just the way we described. Awesome. Yes. We do, yes, we do uh, in any type of bone graft procedure that you would be doing in the mouth for dental implants. We do that, including things that we do to lift the sinuses up in order to be able to create enough bone. If we have areas where the bone is of insufficient width, we have different techniques we have to make the bone wider. Um, sometimes people have too much bone, and sometimes, as you saw with, with the nurse we talked about, we had to actually remove some bone and re-sculpt her in order to be able to get it to the correct shape. But yes, we do all of that right here, Tammy. Yeah. Because I've had two bone implants that failed. It is? Yeah. Okay. So we got to... This last one has failed so far. The third one has been doing good. I'm glad. There's two different kinds, kinds of bone... As we look at bone grafts, there are two general types of bone grafts. One is the bone graft that we do to help save a failing tooth. The other is the type of bone graft that we do to regrow bone after the tooth has been extracted. If you look generally about, uh, uh, with regard to the predictability of those, it's more predictable to grow bone without the tooth in, in the way than it is to grow bone around a failing tooth. Doesn't mean that we don't save teeth, we do. I'm a periodontist, that's what we do for a living. But in terms of bone healing, there's about six different things that have to happen for bone graft to succeed around a tooth. There's only two things that have to happen for bone graft within bone or around bone. So uh, okay. it's, 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 more, it's easier and, and, and more predictable to do it that way. Good, good questions. All right, well we have a staff of very knowledgeable people who would love to talk with you. And if you have individual questions, they'll be able to ask them for you. Again, I appreciate you being here. Thanks, thanks for being And have some sushi, please. There's lots. And if you don't eat it, I'm gonna eat it all. <laughs> so please eat it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions in regards to it, please email us. The American Association of Independent Periodontists is there to help every periodontal practice do better. I'm Dr. Lee Sheldon. And I'm Danielle Joyner. We'll see you on the next video.